Hey, welcome back. So, so last time we talked about um, how you know whether you're ready to climb your proverbial Mount Everest. How do you know your body is fit to take on a challenge? You know, I, I could sign up for a marathon right now and just go start running it. I'll probably die halfway through because I haven't been training. So how do you know? Even if you've been training, unless you've actually run the distance, you don't know if you can do it. So there's a risk because most marathon runners never train the full distance. They go up to 22, 23 maybe miles. Uh, some of them don't even hit 20 miles because they're saving it all for that last one. So there's a little bit of a risk going, I don't know if I'll be able to finish. So if they finish, that means they had what it takes. But if they don't finish, that means they didn't have what it takes. But you can test yourself. So your proverbial marathon or your uh, proverbial mountain that you want to climb Heart rate variability test is the test that's going to tell you if you're ready for that. So I thought about giving you another example of this. Um, I have I have a patient who and I have a lot of these actually who are but their body is is in the uh, left side of the heart rate variability graph. Now the the left side is fight or flight, also known as the sympathetic branch of the nervous system. That's when your pupils dilate, your heart rate goes up. Um, you, 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 your, your skin tells, turns pale white, blood leaves your fingers and your face and your toes, goes to the bigger muscles, digestion stops, immune system stops, you're getting ready to fight or run away. That's when you see the proverbial saber-toothed tiger. And, and the opposite side of that is the parasympathetic nervous system, which is also called rest and repair. That's when you're digesting your food, you're relaxed, you're, you're about to fall asleep, you just had a big meal and you're just comfortably relaxing. That's the state you should be sleeping in so your body can rest and repair during sleep. So I have a patient um, that I was doing the re-exam for just yesterday and I'm looking at his original symptoms and he had uh, memory concerns. He said, I lose, I forget things all the time. He's young, he's, he's in his 30s. He has a constipation on a regular basis, constantly, and uh, he has fatigue, and also high cholesterol. And, and I go, well, that's all one thing. I just did his heart rate variability test, and he is sympathetic dominant. His body is in fight or flight all the time. Now, it's not a mental thing, and it's not an emotional thing. It's not like he's always nervous or worried. That's not the case. He looks normal. You look at him, he's calm, cool, collected. He's relaxed. But his body thinks he's in fight or flight which is why it's producing more cholesterol because cholesterol is the precursor to the building blocks of a lot of things the body needs during fight or flight like hormones like testosterone and estrogen and, and cortisol and growth hormone and vitamin D actually cholesterol is a precursor to that so the body will produce more cholesterol in times of high stress long-term high stress your cholesterol levels will be high but also um, you, you'll be tired because your heart beats higher your blood pressure is higher you're always alert even if you're relaxed, you're alert, and you're not sleeping well. You're not hitting that REM sleep when you're stuck in fight or flight. And lastly, why, um, why constipation? Because the memory, uh, sorry, the um, uh, digestive system slows down and, and, and memory, remember she, I said he's having memory issues. Here's the thing, during fight or flight, the neocortex, which is where you hold your memories and when, you, when, you, when you're uh, parts of the brain that are uh, able to do complex thinking, that part shuts down, blood doesn't go to that area, blood goes to the primitive brain. Primitive brain wants to just fight or run away. So I'll give you a quick scenario here. Imagine you're about to walk into a final exam. You're in college, you've been studying, you're a senior, this is the last test and it's the hardest test you've ever taken and you've been studying for this test for a month and you've got it all down, you know it, you know everything, but you're really nervous because your whole life depends on how you do on this one test. You're nervous and that puts you in the fight or flight, but you're still okay. You're walking into the classroom to sit down and take this exam, your last final exam ever, the hardest one you've been studying for a month. As you walk into the classroom, you trip. And you almost fall, but you don't fall. Have you ever tripped going down the stairs and you catch yourself, but you're now your heart's pounding? Or you were in a car and, and someone just cut you off and you thought you were gonna crash, but you didn't crash and your heart starts pounding? You trip walking into that classroom. You are already nervous. Now you're in full-blown fight or flight. What happens? I forgot everything I studied. I can't, I can't remember a thing. You start crying. You, you, you read the questions. You don't know the answers. That's why people who are in the left side of the heart rate variability graph or in sympathetic dominance 
have memory issues. They can't remember everything. It's because their brain is not being fully utilized. The memories are still there. You're just having trouble accessing it. So think about that. If you're having trouble with memory, if you're having trouble with constipation, or you have chronic sinus infections, you have cold hands, cold feet, dry eyes, dry mouth, dry skin, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Listen, that's not 10 different diseases or 10 different problems. That's one thing. Your body is in sympathetic dominance and we need to fix it. We'll talk next time.